Welcome back. Joining me is Professor Jeff Kazaza from the IPFW Department of Theater and actress Haley Brandt. Good to have you both on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. On April 13th, the theater department is opening The Good Person of Szechuan. Jeff, yes. and you're the director. Tell us a little bit about the story. Uh, well, the story follows um, Shen Te, who is a prostitute with a heart of gold, um, and three gods come down to earth looking for good people, and that's, that's their quest. They have to come down and find good people, and they have to bring that knowledge back up to heaven uh, or to the other gods. And they find no one until they find Sh uh, Shen Te, and they uh, are able to stay with her for the night, and then they go off on the rest of their journey. And they found their good person, but she can't survive because she's so poor. Uh, and so they give her a little bit of money to hopefully help her stay good. So she buys a little shop, and then the rats and uh, all the people come in to basically take advantage of her. Um, and so she ends up, to, in order to be good, she has to create basically an evil half of herself that can put the kibosh on all of that. And on say, the bad people. On the bad people. So she, she uses, Shui Ta is her cousin, uh, who then puts a wall basically between the world and Shen Te so that Shen Te can be good. Mm. Um, and so then the question, the question that the play basically asks is, in a corrupt world, is it even possible to be good? Mm -hmm. um, and so the rest of the play follows on whether Shen Te can be good and still be good to the community and still be good to herself and still be good to her child um, and survive. Okay. Uh, this play was written by Bertolt Brecht. Yes. And what made you choose this play? Well, I think the play itself is very timely. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it deals with a bad economy, it deals with homeless, it deals with unemployment, it deals with the 99% and the 1%. So, I mean, a lot of issues that, are, that the play deals with seem very relevant today. It could have been written yesterday in okay. terms of that. So I'm, I'm fascinated by that, but more than that, I'm fascinated by the story or the fable that we learn about Shen Te and, uh, and all of the other characters. And, and the question that it asks is, is it, is it even possible to be good anymore? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that question is relevant today. It's a good question to yeah. ask. Haley, what role do you play? Uh, I play Shen Te I slash Shui so. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's playing two roles. That's, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah, it, it definitely is two roles. I think that's a good way to put it because yeah. it's one person, but two very different personalities. So. My gosh. Mm -hmm. And you're a student here at IPFW. Mm -hmm. Are you majoring in theater? Yes, I am. And mm -hmm. what year are you? I'm a freshman this year. Oh, wow. Well, welcome. Thank you. How are you finding, <laughs> you know, you're keeping up with your studies and also quite a rigorous rehearsal schedule I know yes. that they have over there in the Department of mm -hmm. Theater. How's that working out for you? It's working out really well. It mm -hmm. is kind of a little bit stressful to time manage. Time management is very important because mm -hmm. As a freshman, you know, coming into the college setting, I had to learn immediately how to balance everything more on my own. But mm -hmm. I feel that I've done a fairly good job of that so far. So it, that's really what it comes down to is just making sure you set enough time aside for yourself, for studies, as well as to devote to the play. So. And people don't realize that actors, people in the theater department, they rehearse every night. Oh, yes. What time do you start? Well, we usually start at 7, and then we end at about 10, Monday through Thursday, then Fridays. Jeff lets us get get out a little early, but in order to do that, we have to start earlier. So we right. rehearse 5.30 to 8.30. So it's like having a part-time job. It yeah. really is. Yeah. And then we also rehearse some Sundays. Some too. Sundays, yes. Okay. Now, you're a theater major. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other interests, uh, like a minor or any other subject matter that you're interested in? Well, I don't have a minor as of yet, but I'm going to add an English minor probably within the next year or so onto my major. Uh, literature, English have always fascinated me, and mm -hmm. I just feel like that would give me more of a well-rounded, well-balanced. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think it should also be noted that she's in the Honors College, yes. or the Honors Program. Yes, I'm right. an Honors student. You're an Honors student, mm -hmm. and we know that, mm -hmm. and we know that we're really glad to have you because you're quite a wonderful student. But that requires that you take kind of extra special, yes. extra mm -hmm. classes that are a little bit more rigorous mm -hmm. than, than the regular classes. Yes, right? I've taken, as of this, the end of the semester, I will have completed six credits of Honors work. Well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, good for you. Thank you. Jeff, getting back to you, uh, Bertolt Brecht was the author of this play. Tell us about Brecht, uh, his importance to world theater, 
uh, and just a little bit about yeah. his Well, his I've, I've always been fascinated with Brecht, and I've always wanted to do his play, a, a play by him at some point. So this is my first Brecht play. Um, but Brecht did a lot of different things to, that have really changed theater, and we now use a lot of his techniques without even knowing it. Um, the way theater used to be is there was a curtain. Uh, you went there, the play was about ready to start, the curtain raised up, um, and there was this set, this new world, and you entered the world immediately. Uh, and one of the things that Brecht was wanting to do was to make audiences think um, about whatever issue was happening in the play um, to either change society or change some aspect of society. And he thought that when audiences provided that much empathy to a play, that they were lost in the play. And so he wanted to bring them outside of that, at least to some extent. To get you to think about what you're looking at. To think about what you're looking at mm -hmm. and examine what you're looking at and say, are there other choices that these characters could make? But when you are so caught up with what's happening on stage, um, you don't do that. You watch mm -hmm. Hamlet and you're like, what's he going to do next? What's, what's going to happen with this character? What's going to happen well, with this you character? Well, you know, you sort of bring up a good point. When audiences go to a movie that they really like and they're crying and they're feeling so deeply for the characters, in a way, once a story grabs your emotions like that, it can also manipulate you. And of course, Breck was a, a refugee from, from Hitler's Germany. Right, yes. And Hitler was a master at using the media to build up empathy for, for pretty bad propaganda, uh, propagandistic reasons. Right. So mm -hmm. is this And Brecht the, was fighting against and, that. And Brecht was fighting against that. And he said, watch what you're looking at. Don't be manip don't let your emotions, people manipulate your emotions, correct? Exactly, yeah, yeah. And that's, and so the, he, he did away with the curtain or started playing with half curtains or doing things so that when you went into the theater, maybe you see some of the set or maybe you see all of it or maybe mm -hmm. you see the lights. Um, which most of our theaters now, that's what they do. If you go to, we just went to the Humana Fest and you see all of the lights yeah, all of the time. In Louisville, yeah. um, and yeah. before, um, that was not, so, they hid all of that. So they hid all of the theatrical magic. So now all of these things that we take for granted um, were things that came from Brecht. You go to the theater and you see the set right. as opposed to it being revealed. So Brecht now would probably do something else because that, that becomes the expectation. And he was mm -hmm. all about breaking the expectation. Sure. So his plays, um, some people, I, I, it used to be thought that he wanted no empathy, mm. but he didn't. That's not, he wanted you to be involved to the extent, because if you're not involved, you don't care. Sure. Well, we're talking with Jeff Kazaza and Haley Brand from IPFW Department of Theater about The Good Person of Szechuan, opens on April 13th here yes. on, uh, on campus. What makes this play challenging for you, Haley? Well, there's a lot of elements of the play that make it challenging. The role, first off, is quite a task uh, because it, it's. You, I approached it originally. You know, Brecht has a very specific style, and I was looking at it as this is Shente who ends up dressing up like a man for her own purposes. But really, in a lot of ways, you have to look at it as two separate characters because. Brecht was all about breaking the expectation and, and kind of presenting it to make you think. So I actually sat down with Jeff one morning and had a very long conversation <laughs> about the character arc a little bit. And yeah. so I'm so used to this character has a backstory and this is why this event causes this event causes this event. But you almost have to look at it as very separate, individualized images and moments and in time. So while I had to combine both Shente and Shui Ta into one character, I also at the same time had to make them very separate people. So that sounds amazingly hard. <laughs> you know, we're almost out of time, but mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, is this play for children? Is there an age appropriate? Uh, I would say it's more in the PG-13 range. PG-13? Um, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of language um, and maybe some suggestions of what, I mean, she is a prostitute, but mm -hmm. we don't see any of that, but we, it's okay. suggested that she's going off into Yeah, but certainly um, high school students and above can and see it. it. Absolutely, and it, it, it um, and the idea also is though, it, though Brecht sounds like he's wanting to be educational, his primary goal was entertainment. And it is a lot, it's a fun show. It's, we need to reiterate that there's music, there's comedy. Yes. It's, it's not the serious thing, even though it deals with a serious subject matter. You know, that's all the time we have. I just want to remind everybody that Good Person of Szechuan opens on April 13th mm -hmm. here at IPFW. It's the last show of the <laughs> season, last show of the year. I bet you're all tired and looking forward <laughs> to getting it done, but we're looking forward to seeing it. And thank you both for coming on the show. Thank you thank for having you. us. For more information about the IPFW Department of Theater, visit ipfw.edu front slash theater 
or call the Larson Ticket Office for your tickets at 481-6555. Arts Weekly airs every week, Tuesday through Thursday, on College Access Television and most Sundays on WFWA PBS 39. You can also see us on YouTube and Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Chuck O'Connor. Thanks for tuning in to Arts Weekly. Join me next week with guests Catherine Lee from the Fort Wayne Cinema Center and Chris Rakowski from the Department of Music. Thank you.